Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this bezel set wire wrap cabochon. But with this one I've made an open bezel. So you can actually see the cabochon through the bezel itself. You can see here because of the weave that we've done around the bezel. This is really nice and open effect instead of a closed off one. So if you want to learn how to make this then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. Now what I have here is two different gauges of regular round copper wire. The first one is a 1mm. This is going to be the base wire throughout and kind of create the frame. And then this is a 0.4mm. This is going to be the weaving wire that we're going to make around the base wire here. And then finally we need the cabochon. Now this technique will work for pretty much any cabochon you can think of, shape and size. But this specific one that I'm using is a 3 by 35 cm teardrop shape just an agate purple one. Like I said, you can use whatever you want to. This is just basically to show you the technique. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then what we need to do to get started is cut some lengths of wire. Now what I have here is two lengths of my one millimeter wire, so the thick gauge of about 40 centimeters each. And this is just in relation to my stone that I'm using. It might be a different length that you need, but it's just a rough guideline really. Because, like I said, this is the stone that I'm using. What you want to make sure of, regardless what stone you're using, is you have enough to go around the circumference of the stone, and then also still enough to make a bale with. So that's what I'm saying, it's just more of a guideline. This is just what's going to be suitable for mine. It'll probably be suitable for most cabochons, but say if you do have one that's quite a bit larger, you might need longer lengths than this. And then as for the 0.4mm wire, in this case I'm just going to be working with that from the reel so I'm not going to cut off a length because it can be quite difficult to know exactly how much you're going to need. So what I've then done is taken my two lengths of my base wires here and put them into the spring clamp. So it just looks like this. You can also use another kind of clamp like a ring clamp or whatever the method you want to keep hold of them. I just find this really easy and it really helps with having the distance between the two base wires as well. Then I've just taken a length, about 10 to 15 centimeters in from the end is where I'm going to start weaving right here in front of the clamp and then the tails are just coming out through the clamp there. So this is how I'm going to work with it. Now as for the distance you need to put between the two base wires here in if you're using a clamp or anything to hold on to it, that really depends on your cabochon. So I have this distance here because what I've done is I've taken my cabochon, I put the wires what I think would be the distance I need and then what I do is I look from the side and you can put just the edge of your cabochon through like this. Obviously don't push it and force it through. Just put it gently so the wires rest on it, the edge there. And you want to just be able to see a little bit coming through. So it's going to fit perfectly with this distance all the way around because we just need the base wires just to come in on the edge on both sides of the cabochon a little bit. So that's the way you can measure that. So it's just figuring out that way how far this is because it really depends if your cabochon is thinner than this you might need a smaller distance. If it's thicker, then you might need a bigger distance. So that really depends on your cabochon. So I then take my base wires here in my ring clamp. And you just want to make sure as well that the wires are as straight as possible so you don't have any kinks or bends. And then I'm going to take my 0.4mm wire, which I've left on the reel, like I said, just because we don't know how much we're going to need to use. Then what I'm going to do is start the weave. And I'm going to take the end of my weaving wire here, just leave a bit of a tail to hold on to, get rid of that later, put it behind and then I'm going to first of all attach it here, so I'm just going to go around the bottom base wire, so down through the two and just wrapping it around here and just doing that a few times attaches the weaving wire to the base wire nicely. So I've just done it about three times now and I just want to make sure that my wraps are nice and close together. And then we need to figure out what we're doing with the weave. So what I recommend is that you count the amount of times that you wrap here. So I've done it three times and there is no specific amount you have to do. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to be doing here but you can really make more or less wraps. It all depends how open you want the bezel to look and the weave to be here. So five, make sure every wrap that you do, you push it nice and close. And six, and again, using, you can either just use your fingers to push it down. If it's a little bit fiddly to get in there because I'm so close to the ring clamp, I'm just gonna gently squeeze it with my pliers. Just like that, so now we have six wraps. 
And now what I want to do is I'm going to use six wraps to begin with here. And that's just to start out with because first we're kind of making half of a triangle first of all. But then what I want to do is swap over to the other side. And that's when we're, gonna, when we're gonna get into the proper weave. So make sure it's pushed all the way down. It's coming down between the two base wires. Instead of going around the bottom one again, I'm just gonna push it the opposite direction towards the top base wire. Bring it around the top of that. And then down between the two again. And then push that wrap all the way down. And what you wanna make sure to do when you Swapping from side to side, you don't want to pull too hard in your wire because that's going to make your base wires want to get closer together. That's the other thing about using the ring clamp, it makes it a bit easier, at least right down here around where the ring clamp is tight around the base wires to help avoid that. But you have to pay attention to that throughout. I'm going around again, so that's twice, and then just make sure. Again, I'm going to have to use just the pliers here that they're pushed together, and also that basically these wraps start the same level as they do on the other side. So, this crossover wire that we have between the two base wires is going to basically be sitting at an angle a little bit. So, that's two. So, what I want to do now is again, I want to continue counting my wraps, but this is going to be the first proper part of the weave that we're going to do. So three, the first part is a little bit fiddly because you can see it's quite loose, but once you get proper into it, it gets much easier. Four, so just keep going around the same base wire and down between the two, and back around again. Five, make sure you push them close every time, and then once more, and then we have six which is in the same amount as I did on the other side. Remember, this is just the amount that I'm using. You can do more or less wraps, like I said. It all depends on the look that you want. So now I have six, but then you can see if I cross over now, this crossover wire is end up gonna, gonna end up being straight. So I wanna continue wrapping basically the double amount of times that I just have. Cause like I said, the first wraps on the bottom base wire was basically half of a triangle. So to get the full triangle, then what we need to do is actually end up with 12 wraps. So it's 7, 8, 9, 10, another 2, Eleven, and the last one. So just kind of guide your way around. Whenever you're doing this weave, don't pull too tight on it, on the weaving wire. Just guide it around. And twelve. That's the last one. So I've now got. I started out with six wrap on the first section there, where I also attach the wire. Then I move to the other side here, and I've done twelve. So you can kind of see. If I then bring this back over to the opposite wire, base wire, you get this little triangle forming and it looks nice and even because it's a double amount of wraps that I did on this side as I did on the first one. And that's how you make sure to achieve that. So it's the same principle no matter how many wraps you choose to do. Say if you choose to do five to begin with rather than six like me, you'll just do 10 on the other side. So it's the exact same principle regardless of what you do. So then to continue, I'm gonna, it's coming down between the two base wires, my weaving wire. Instead of keep going the same way, I'm gonna then cross over to the opposite side which is the bottom base wire where we started out. Again, make sure as you're doing this, you're not pulling too hard in your weaving wire, because like I said, it's gonna close up the base wires. So just guide it around the bottom one and down between the two base wires again, and then push it down. So you constantly wanna make sure to keep an eye on having an even distance between your base wires throughout. And that's what I would say, the weave itself is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. The most tricky part about this is keeping that distance between the base wires. So it's really a matter of practice as well. But that's why I also find that this clamp really helps with that. So I'm gonna do another 
12 wraps on this side here to then become the bottom side of this triangle. So I've then done all my 12 wraps here on the bottom section and then it's time to move over to the opposite side again. So my weaving wire coming down between the two base wires and without pulling too hard just guide it over to the place where we want it to sit. What I find quite helpful as well is the finger here that I have behind. Once I've got the wire in place where I want to do my first wrap, I kind of hold my finger there to hold the wire in place and kind of cushion it a little bit. Just gently, because then it stays in place and then as I'm guiding the wire around it really helps to keep it in the place exactly where I want it to. And again without them pulling on the wire as well it really helps prevent that. So I have it there, do my first wrap, guide it around, make sure it sits all the way down close to the previous ones on that side. So basically that's just created the tip of the triangle you could say. And around again and then we need to do the 12 wraps on this side that's the amount that I'm doing anyway so just the amount that you're doing and then you just want to basically keep doing that back and forth and then what I also would recommend is where I say it's easier to use this for something like this where you have to keep an even distance once you get a little bit more work done, maybe another triangle, what you can do to really help, because it's easier to have control over the distance the closer you are to the ring clamp here. So say if I just keep weaving and I keep moving out, these wires are a lot more wobbly and it would have more of a tendency to move closer together. Whereas once I've done a little bit of weaving, I move the weave and my wires further into my ring clamp there. So basically I keep moving the ring clamp up as I keep weaving as I get more and more done. So my work working area is always going to be around the tip of the ring clamp. So that really helps keeping the control. But keep doing this and obviously you want to do it a length that's going to match roughly with your cabochon. So say take a piece of scrap cord, measure the length all the way around the circumference there then you have the length and you can measure that against your weave so you know how long a weave you need to make. So I then have the length of weave that I've gotten ready here and what I can do now is take the clamp off just because we're kind of done doing the weave so what we need to do now is start shaping this and make sure the weave is pushed nice and close together you don't have it's not opened up so you have some big gaps or anything like that and also make sure obviously your wires are still, the base wires are as nice and straight as possible. I still have my weaving wire here attached to the reel because I'm also going to be using that for the bale as well. You can cut it off if you want to and then start a new wire on the bale, that's completely up to you. I just prefer to whenever I can to use one continuous length of wire as far as possible. So I now have this weave and before I shape it, what I just want to do is kind of shape the actual inside first a little bit because this is going to obviously cup around the cabochon it's going to sit inside there. So you want to make sure it's going to come far enough just to catch the cabbage on each side of it, on the front and the back, just enough to hold it safely obviously. To help that a little bit, I'm just going to get, I've just got a crochet hook here, and one that's not too big, you can use anything, a rod of some sort, a mandrel. Then what I want to do is just lie this down in the kind of little well on top of the weave, and then just gently push up the sides a little bit all the way and this just helps shape it a little bit more to make a bit more of a well you'll be able to see it closely on yours that the stone is then going to sit inside of even better than it was otherwise all the way along doesn't have to be too much just a little bit is just fine just enough to just capture it there once you have that and you're pretty happy with that you'll be able to see it a bit from the side that it kind of on one side where we dipped it in it dips down and creates that well so just like this so this now is going to be the outside so obviously if you have a side you prefer this should be pretty much the same but you can always choose that before you do this step then what I want to do is start getting this around my cabochon so you can start shaping it a little bit and obviously make sure that the well that dips in it's on the inside, just like this. Also, I want to make sure that my the ends of my weave is meeting at the top of the cabochon there. So whatever cabochon you're using, that obviously depends on that. Bring it around the sides, just gently, bit at a time. 
and the other side as well. Make sure that your weaves push nice and close together. And this is just basically to get the shape of the cabochon. You can do this holding the cabochon to try and shape it around the cabochon or you can just kind of shape it by your hands first of all to get the curves in there and then get the final shape with the cabochon something like this, just get the weaving way out of the way so you can see the ends of my weave there on both sides is now meeting up at the top of the cabochon and it's going to sit a little something like this and capture it nicely now what you can just do is just test this if you bring the tops together like that test the cabochon how secure it is in there before we then start going further because rather test that now and if it's not quite secure enough yet you can always readjust if you need to make the well a bit deeper rather do that now so something a bit like that test it out, keep hold of only the wires so let go of the cabochon and if it stays in there and if you shake it and it doesn't come out you know it's going to be secure so there we go, looks like this around the side so you have this really nice effect of the open bezel so instead of a closed one you'll be able to see some of the cabochon through the sides as well so that's what I quite like about this style of bezel, the open one just get the wing wire out of the way there just the little tail on the other end now we need to then start securing it at the top here obviously because it's still open and it's going to fall out then the way that we do that is what I've done with the base wires I kind of crisscrossed them through each other so if you look at that, if you imagine my four fingers here, the base wires, I crossed them through each other like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, the tail of the wing wire out of the way. I'm going to make sure to keep hold of my piece on my cabochon here. I kind of like to hold that in my hand. Make sure the weaves are pushed all the way down. Double check before you do this step, you don't have any gaps you don't want. And then keep hold of it when you're happy with how it sits then what I'm going to do is the front one here the one that's crossing over the front it doesn't matter what side you do that from it'll be the same thing that one I'm going to take and stack bring it around the side here of the other ones and towards the back so something will be like that and then on the back side here it's the same principle you also have one that's furthest towards the back as you do on the front. Just make sure it sits right. And what I just want to do is have the weaving wire here. I actually want, want to make sure that stays inside in the middle of it all. So the back one that's furthest towards the back. Make sure the weave is pushed down. It's pushed down there. Also bring it around the side and then towards the front in this case. So that's part of it. You want to then just make sure to maneuver it if you need to. Constantly make sure you double check in that the cabochon is still securely in there. If anything is kind of switching places, make sure to check it as you go rather than kind of doing that after. Because then it might be too late, you might have to undo too much. But like that, bring it around the side. The weaving way out of the way. Make sure, like I said, this one is coming out from the middle of all of these because I'm going to use this for the bail. Then you can continue both of them here while you take the front of the back. This is one from the front is coming around the side and the back and then coming over to the opposite side. The one that's coming from the back is around this side sticking out of the front here and I'm just going to bring that over to the opposite side as well. So something a bit like that. And this is all we need for now. This is just secured it in place, so now I can let go of it and it's going to stay how I want it to stay. There we go. Now, like I said, if you need to do any final adjustments, I would recommend doing that now. So if you feel like it doesn't sit quite like how you want it to, make sure the shape is in place, make sure the cabochon sits nice and evenly all the way around. So it looks nice on the sides as well the front and the back and then we're going to have these just sitting here on the sides the ones we just wrapped around the top we're going to finish them off, I prefer to do that once I've done the bail as well just so it's kind of more secure and in place we have the little tail, I'm going to finish that off at the end as well 
Now what I have is this situation where I have my weaving wire coming out through the middle of all those the two base wires that are wrapped around and also these two base wires are coming out from the middle as well. So maybe as you'll be able to see, these two are perfect ones to use for the bale. So I'm actually going to do that and that's why I wanted the weaving wire in the middle there. So right now these actually also have a pretty perfect shape because I want my bale to go outwards a little bit, graduate outwards, and then I'm at, at the top and then graduate inwards again to make a nice shape of a bale. So all I'm going to do is use this weaving wire to start a figure of eight weave to create the bale with. So you just want to wrap it around one of the base wires. So just ignore the two that we wrapped around here. Just try and push them gently out of the way and ignore them. Wrap it around twice, push it as far down as it'll go. Then I'm down through the middle here between these two wires that I'm going to use for the bale. Down through the middle and I'm crossing over to the other side. Push it all the way down. Again wrapping around twice. And then I'm coming down through the middle of them again, crossing over to the other side. And wrap around twice. And down through the middle and crossing over to the other side. And that's basically the figure of eight weave here. And I'm using this to kind of fill in the bale to make it a nice and decorative one as well. So just keep going here until you reach the point that you kind of want to be the top of the bale or you could say the middle. We're going to make a length and then fold it back. So the middle part of the full length is going to end up being the top of the bale. But just keep going like this until I then get to the point where I want to graduate inwards again and I'm just going to show you how I do that. So now that i reach that point here that I want to be the middle of the bale, so the widest point as well, what I want to do is then take some flat nose pliers or chain nose and then first of all I just want to shape the base wires. So I'm going to take one side at a time, make sure your weave is pushed all the way down so it's nice and tight so we don't have one side becoming uneven from the other. And then I want to bend them inwards gently, so just a little bit, about equal to the angle that you have down here. Same with the other side, bend it inwards, so they're going to end up kind of overlapping there at the top. And you can just adjust the angle until you're happy with it, until you feel it's going to end up looking nice. What we can always do is then at the top, just gently where they seem to be crossing over there, bend them back, give them a little bit of a curve there. That just makes it easier to weave in between them. So, something like this, just make sure that the angles are right down here up until about where we're going to end up. So, what I basically want to do now is this space that I have left, I want to fill that in as well. So you want, obviously, that distance there to be about the same as down here. I just need to bring them in a little bit more. Something like that. You can always bend these a bit further out if you need to. Open them up more, just to make it easier to work with. So something like that. Now to fill this in even more, continuing that, because it's going to be the same weave that I'm going to be using. The difference is now these are graduating inwards, and that's always a little bit trickier than when they're graduating outwards, because what's going to happen is you'll be able to see already now the wire, if you just pull on it a little bit, it's going to want to naturally slip towards the narrower point. So if I just stop there, go over to the other side, and down through the middle over to the other side, you'll be able to see that the wrap that I've just done is wanting to kind of slip down the same on the other side. So to make sure that doesn't happen, what we need to do is do this a little bit more controlled. So what I like to do is when I'm then weaving so it graduates inwards, the wrap that I've just done, in this case it's on that side here and I'm coming down between the two, I like to then have the finger behind it, make sure it's pushed all the way down, cushion my finger behind it, at the same time I'm pushing it downwards a little bit, bring it down between here, then I bring it over to the other side, and then I make sure I also use this and push it all the way down so the weave on that side is nice and tight, then I use the finger on that side to cushion it from behind, make sure it stays in place while I'm weaving this and wrapping it, go down through the middle, push it all the way down, cushion my finger behind it, and then go around again because it's the same weave, like that, and then at the end I always just make sure I push them down so the wraps that I've done there are nice and close. 
Then to swap over to the other side again, the one that I've just wrapped, I put my finger behind that, push it downwards a little bit, make sure it stays in place. Then I go to the opposite side, use the weaving wire to push those wraps down, put my finger behind it to cushion it, and then start with the two wraps on this side. And use that to push it all the way down, and again put my finger behind it, and then go down between the two base wires again. And then that's how I like to wrap when I'm wrapping from a wider point to a narrower point, just to try and keep it controlled and to keep the wire from slipping down because you want to still make sure that you have as nice and neat weave as you possibly can. So keep doing this all the way to this point, then you have the full length of your bail there. We're then going to use that to then cre actually to create the bail and then finish it off as well. So now that I've reached the full length of my bail here, then what you can also do now, because we're pretty much done with all the weaving, I've cut off the length of my wire that was attached to the reel, my weaving wire there. Just cut that so you have a comfortable length left to just work with, because we just need to attach the bail as well. Then now, what we need to do is shape the bail. So I'm going to get my crochet hook out again. You can really use anything, any form of mandrel that you have, whatever you have, or a pen that's the right size. Just whatever thickness you want your bail to be. Then I'm going to put this behind, just a bit below the middle of the bale, which is the widest point there. And then bend the rest towards the back, like this. Make sure that your weave is pushed nice and tight together, and it stays nice and tight, like that. And then we can look at the back here, see where our wires have ended up. And then if you need to do any final adjustments, but otherwise then you have the back of your bale looks like this. Now what we need to do is attach it, because obviously it's still open, as you can see here. We need to attach it, which is what we need to use the rest of the tail that we've been weaving with for, and the one that I cut off, because we now need to attach this by going through kind of the framework as well. So right here at the end is where I did my last wraps on the weave on the bale. So what we want to do is attach right below here but go through the frame. So we're starting on one side. This is kind of just look at yours and see how it looks. I'm coming from this side here and instead of just weaving back and forth on those two base wires, I'm going to go around back through the frame on my cabochon and catch that. And it helps sometimes you just make a bit of a bent needle like that out of it, just to get through just where you want. So come through here and bring your weaving wire all the way around. Pull it all the way through and then I just want this to sit exactly where I want it to. I'm going to take the chain nose and just bring it all the way to the basically the top where the base wires in the frame are crossing over just to get it as seamless as possible. You can always just give it a little tug to make sure it blends in between the wraps around the frame as well. So that's once around there. You can then come up between the two base wires, go over to the other side, maybe do one or two wraps here around that base wire on that side because we need to attach on that side as well. We want to do it on the one side. I want it to be stable so not one side is kind of open and what I'm going to do again is here just catch a little needle just catch the very frame right close to where the bottom of the bale ends just go through it like this bring it all the way through and again some chain nails can help just to get your wires just in the right position where you want them to go Push them together nice and close. Make it look nice and neat here. Come around the frame. Again, give it a little tug so it can nestle in between. Then I'm going to come up between the two kind of legs there. The base wires from the bale. And I just want to basically finish this off now. Wrap around once more. Up between the two. And then just once more over to the other side as well just for that extra security and push them as close 
as you can these wraps. So there we go. And now we can basically get rid of this weaving wire. So I'm going to take my flush cutters here and then it's coming up between the two and I just want to get right down there where the wire is coming out from and cut off the excess. Now what you can do is you can wrap it around the frame and that a bit more if you feel like it needs to be a bit more secure but it is held in there but that's completely up to you. Then if you have a bit of an end sticking out that you can feel or anything just make sure to tuck that in with some chain nose pliers so you don't have any ends of your wire sticking out anywhere. Now what we have left then are the base wires here. So I'm just going to get rid of the two on the back first. So what we need to do is cut down, because obviously they're too long now. I'm going to take some wire cutters and flush cutters here, cut down. So how long you want them to be is really up to you, because I'm going to be spiraling them up. So how large you want those spirals to be is completely up to you. But like cut them one to the length that I want, and then I cut the other one right away. Like that. Because that way you make sure that they end up being the same length. Which means you're going to be more likely to get the same size spiral as well. Instead of if you cut one and then make the spiral, you're going to not be quite sure where you need to cut the other one. So cut both the wires here. Then I'm going to take some round nose pliers. Start on one side, right from the end. And start spiraling it upwards. And this is just basically to finish off the base wires. So they're nice and secure and also not in the way for wearing the piece but also to have a bit of a decorative back here so it looks nice as well. Now I have started my little loop there. I'm going to then just go in and cut off the very tip of that just because I always find it doesn't start out completely round. Go back in and continue my spiral. And like I said, how you want yours to look is completely up to you. I don't want to make too much of a fuss of it. Just a simple little spiral like that. Do the same on the other side. Curl it up and then because we made them the same length from the beginning, they should automatically end up pretty much being the same size spiral as well. Just cut off a little tip and continue spiraling to make it a nicer shape and then just bring it up to the same level as the other one so there we go I'm just going to flatten them out and then you can just keep hold of your bale here because you might find that they're sticking out a little bit from the back keep hold of the bale so that doesn't move and then just press them inwards to lay flat against the back of the capuchin. That way they also aren't going to catch on anything as you're wearing them because they're kind of in, nestled in behind the capuchin but also within the frame there. So just like that. Then what we have left now, because that was the back finished off, what we have left is then the first original tail from the weaving wire and then the other two base wires. So all I'm going to do is you can just get rid of the weaving wire first, it doesn't really matter what you do first. But to get rid of that, all you do is take some wire cutters, I'm using some flush cutters here, right where it's coming out from, go in and cut it down, like that. Then I'm just going to take some chain nose and make sure that that very end that's left of the wire is gets tucked away as well, so that's not sticking out anywhere. So that can't catch on anything. There we go. All we have left now are the two base wires on the sides coming straight out to the sides from the middle point here. One is kind of coming from the back of the front piece and the other one is over the front there. With these all I'm going to do is bring this more towards the front and this a little bit more towards the back. We also want to cut these down. Again how long is up to you something a bit like this and again I prefer to kind of cut them at the same time it's just easier to judge roughly the same length and something a bit like that I'm going to take my round nose pliers again do the same thing on both sides 
go to the end of the wire and as close to the end of the pliers as you can. That's what I prefer anyway to get a small spiral. Start it off, go ahead and cut off the very tip of that to get a more rounded shape. And then continue it. And then again this finishes off these base wires nicely and securely. But it also just leaves a bit of decorative edge here on the side. Just flatten it and then you can continue spiraling this with your flat nose because I want to bring it all the way in to lie right at the side of the bale there and on the bottom. It also can hide if you have a little bit of messiness in there but where you kind of created the bottom of the bale it can also help hide that. So it's quite handy but it's still quite neutral. So something like that. Same thing on the other side. Spiral that in. In the exact same way. Cut off the little tip there. And then just go back to spiraling. Bring it all the way in. Swap over to your chain nose pies if you have to. And then you can see that spiral is going to lay right there on the side of that bale, on the side of the bale on this side here. And then it's just maneuvering them into place. So it looks something a bit like this. Get them to sit exactly how you want them to. So they're nice and even here on both sides. And then once you're happy with that, you'll have your finished piece. And there we go. So I'm going to bring that in a bit. So just like that. So now I've finished off those wires as well. You can see you have a nice decorative little spiral there on the side so it doesn't really add anything too much to it as in it's too obvious but it can also help hide something but you finished off your ends nicely so there we go it looks like that that's the back so you have a really nice bezel around the cabochon but because of the weave that we've done it's nice and open so you can still see the cabochon through the edge as well actually instead of having a closed bezel so there we go I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this wire woven bracelet where I've added in some beads along the way as well. And this is the final piece that I've made. So it looks like this. So I'm doing a regular wire weave here. This is the Aztec wire weave. And then what I'm doing though along the way is I'm adding in little seed beads to add this really big impact of some colour as well. It gives a really totally completely different effect I think adding in those beads. You can really play around with both the colour